Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. Hello everyone and welcome to Online Success Journey. This is episode 125. Are you ready to join the clan? Today we have Nicole Holland, a podcaster who helps subject matter experts increase their visibility through podcast guesting to create greater impact, influence and income. She inspires entrepreneurs all around the world through her popular podcast, The Business Building Rockstars Show and Get Guest Ready and her annual online summit the Business Building Rockstar Summit. Hello, Nicole. Hello, hello, patients. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. I know the clan is anxious to hear your story, so let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my clan a little bit about your background, about what you did before you started your own online business? Take us right up to the last job or business before you're online. Sure thing. So I've pretty much been an entrepreneur my whole life since I was very young. I mean, I had, you know, I was selling vegetables. I was a mother's helper, babysitter, you name it, anything that I could do to make money and help people made me feel really happy. Um, And I took a number of twists and turns throughout my lifetime. And um, most notably, I worked in professional sports and entertainment. I was a massage therapist. I was a foster parent. I worked um, in outreach with uh, youth and families in crisis. I was a correctional officer most recently, and uh, from there, I decided that I did not want to spend time um, in an environment that didn't make me feel good, and working with people who I had to fight against to do my job, it was like, wait, what am I doing? Life is supposed to be fun, and so I'm going to figure this out, and with that, I quit my job as a correctional officer and decided, even though I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, I knew the internet had opportunities to you know to connect with people no matter where they were at like you and I right now we're across the the Atlantic from each other but we are able to have this amazing conversation as if we're sitting in the same room and so I knew that there was potential there and that I was going to figure it out and so I quit my job and started my online business Wow. You, you just woke up one day morning and you just said, I'm tired, I'm half enough, and I'm just leaving without well, having to start. That. Because other people, they start, and then they're like, once they work, they're halfway, and then they'll say, okay, I've had now enough income, so I can quit my job. Well, oh, I so, certainly did not have enough income, and it certainly wasn't that quick. It was um, on December 31st of 2013, turning into 2014, uh, was the most horrible shift of my life. <laughs> It was a a very bad uh, work shift um, in the upper segregation unit at the facility that I worked at and um, very traumatic. And at the end of it, I was sitting there. It's around 3 a.m. sitting in the office and I, I said to myself, I will not be here for another for another year. Will not be here for another New Year's Eve turn of the year. And um, so, you know, we say these things to ourselves and, and we have hard times. And then the times pass and time passes and things tend to get forgotten about as time passes and we get back into our normal routine. Now, during that time from December 31st, 2013, through the next month, I was desperately searching for for a way out. I wound up getting my real estate license, in fact, so that I could sell property. Um, I was really looking at what can I do that will get me out of here. So my mindset was, I don't like where I am. I'm miserable. I'm sick. But I don't know what I can do because I was feeling so low and I couldn't see the real possibilities. And so I was just looking for answers and I wasn't finding them. I was just, you know, going through the motions and passing time. And one day went into the next, into the next, into the next. And I was tolerating my life. And then something happened at the end of 2014. The calendar, the schedule came out for the Christmas holiday season. And I got mine. And of course, I was scheduled to work overnight on New Year's Eve. And that is where I realized in that moment, I remembered the year before and I remembered my promise to myself and I did not have any money in the bank. I did not have anything stashed away. I was not planning to leave. I forgotten, right? I was getting by for the year. 
And it was at that moment that I went, oh my goodness, like this is real. And I made this promise to myself and I'm really good at keeping promises to other people. But when it comes to keeping promises to myself, those are the things I usually let slide by. And I wasn't comfortable with that. And so I had to, you know, sit with that. And I made the decision that this was a promise I was going to keep. And with that, I, you know, I went to work and one night on night shift, I drafted my resignation and I sent it off to my superintendent for her to get in the morning when she arrived at work. And that was it. I, I promised myself that no matter what, I'd figure it out. And even if that meant that I would be working at McDonald's again, well, you know, I worked at McDonald's when I was a teenager and if I had to do that again, I would. But I had faith that no matter what, I was going to get by and I was going to I was going to change the path because I was a happy person who had been in a really toxic situation for a number of years and I lost so much of myself. Wow. What did your family say when you just told them that, you know what? <laughs> I've well, left I, my job. I, I don't have another one. Yeah, no, I don't have family. So it was, it's just me. Okay. And your friends, <laughs> what did your friends say? <laughs> No, like, um, mm, nobody really had sure? anything to say, you know, when, so I was, as a correctional officer, I really distanced myself from normal people. I mean, I was working every day with child molesters and rapists and murderers and, and people who were really not enjoyable to be around and it takes a toll. And um, so when I would go out and socialize with people, I never felt really like anybody got me or like I got them like the conversations and especially when people would talk about shows like Orange is the New Black and um, you know there's some show about methamphetamine or something. there's all these shows all these TV shows and people will talk about those things and I was on the other side of things and I just and even in the news and so I wound up really um, isolating myself and spending a lot of time alone and um, so nobody really had anything to say because there wasn't anyone to have that discussion with. Um, I do have some neighbors that I enjoyed. And um, the day that I quit my job, so it was 7 a.m. I got off work. And um, that afternoon, my furnace went out. And I live in a cold uh, place where there's a lot of snowstorms. And this was in the middle of a snowstorm. And what happens if, uh, if your clan isn't aware is that when you're in an environment that's you know, below freezing consistently, and um, you have a home that doesn't have heat, and you have water in the pipes, they will burst, and you will lose your home. And so that was the situation the day I quit my job, it was that my, uh, my heater went out, my furnace went out, and the cost of repairing it was more than replacing it. And the cost to replace it was just a little bit more than I actually had in the bank. And it wasn't an option of do I do this now or put it off for later it was this is you you must like I there was no choice I had to pay for a new furnace um and and immediately and um my neighbor said well can you get your job back and it was at that moment I stood out there on the porch and I said absolutely not and I was so a hundred percent sure that God had my back or, you know, the universe would provide. It was just a knowing. It was a knowing that this is like a test. It's like, are you sure? Are you really serious about moving forward? Because we always have obstacles come up. And I find in the in my life and in the lives of the people I've worked with, the, hard, the biggest obstacles come up when you're ready to move forward. And it's almost like, wait a minute, you're getting out of your comfort zone. Wait a minute. Are you sure you want to do this? And that's why most people never do. That's why most dreams are never realized because people allow their circumstances to dictate their um, their choices in life. Wow. My background. Wow. Ejane Nicole. Wow. You are really, <laughs> you're a risk taker. <laughs> yeah, yes. I think, I think when you have a burning desire inside of you and you know that you're destined for something else. And for me, that's happiness. I really, truly believe that, that success in my world is being happy. And of course, there's challenges and there's things that happen that you're not, like, I'm not happy all the time. I'm not like, you know, uh, but I, I enjoy the, the contrast. I enjoy the realization that I'm living life and things come up and they're to to overcome and and I think when you take on a mindset 
of, well, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be fun. You know, sometimes things work out and I used to get so awesome, just so, ah, like so upset when things didn't work out. And now I'm really grateful when things don't work out because I think that's because there's something better. And so even recently as when my business is pivoting and growing and um, I've got these, you know, this long list of to do's and there's things that they're on there. And I'm like, these have to get done. I have to get this done because of this, you know, there's this deadline, I have to get this done, I have to get this done. And then I want wind up going and I'm like, it's still on the to-do list and I really need to get it done. And then all of a sudden something huge happens. That means if I would have done it the way I was planning on doing it, I would have had to redo it. So I always look at those like, oh, this isn't going right. I, I strive to, I shouldn't say always, but I strive to look at those things now in my life where it feels like things aren't going right and just take a breath and go, all right, It'll be there tomorrow. And if it's meant to be taken care of, I'll feel the inspiration to do it. And that's where when I live that every day, I am happy every day that there's nothing else controlling me except for my own inspiration. I think we need a dose from that. Okay. What is the most, now you are a podcaster, you do most of your work online uh, uh, for your businesses. What is the most dangerous belief an online entrepreneur can have? That's a great question. Um, I think the most dangerous belief that an online entrepreneur can have is the one that I had when I started out online, which was there's a right way to do this. And I don't know what it is. So I have to find out what's the right way. And when I quit my job as a correctional officer, I was a ghost. Nobody knew who I was. I was terrified to put myself online because that would mean that people could find me, right? And again, I worked with not good people for a really long time. So I thought, okay, I need to figure this out and I need to figure it out fast. And so I I listened to all the marketing messages and I sought out, okay, who's the best in this? Who's the best? Who's teaching this? Who's teaching that? And so with my very limited um, awareness, I hired people and bought programs because they said, you have to do this. Oh, you have to do this. If you don't do webinar, you're gonna, you know, leave money on the table. This is the new thing. Oh, you have to do this. You have to do that. If you don't have this, you're gonna fail. And so I spent a lot of money on faith. I'll credit, I'll credit because I didn't have any money coming in when I quit my job. And I tried, I tried to do all the right things that they were telling me. And what I found was that I was getting more and more frustrated and more and more poor (laughs) because I was trying to do what other people told me was the right thing. And I'm like, it doesn't feel right. Or there's something missing. And I wasn't trusting my own guidance system, my own intuition. And finally, after probably about five, six months of that, I had enough. And I said, no, 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 no. There's no right way to do this. I know better than that. You know, I just had to remember that online business was only one thing, but I know how to do life. And, you know, you may have heard the expression, a lot of times people say, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And I was like, wait a minute, I know how to get through life. I know how to overcome adversity. I know how to do all kinds of stuff. And when I don't, but I have a goal, I figure it out. So this is no different. So I reframed my thought of that really dangerous belief that there's a right way and somebody else has the knowledge of it and I have to find out and follow their directions in order to do it right and I realized that is just baloney and once I figured that out everything changed well now you're a podcaster you host these shows but Nicole why do you do what you do oh well patients I love helping people realize their dreams like I said before most dreams will never be realized and it's not because the people aren't capable it's because they just don't they don't know they don't know what they don't know and they're stuck in beliefs that they're not good enough or that wealth only comes to the few privileged and and so we create our own reality and the people who are willing to take those risks and say this is the life that I know this is the experience I have and yet I I know inside of me there's something more and I want that something more and they're motivated and they're motivated to to get to that something more those are the people I love to work with I have a client who I've been working with for a couple of years and she came to me um, as she had a hobby, a photography hobby. So she was a beach body coach and in her 
uh, college she went to uh, learn how to do, um, was it, I forget what it's called, for caring for people in the home, like home care, home health care kind of stuff, um, or uh, an aid, like a, an aid for people who are... Support um, worker. Yes, thank you, it. exactly, yeah. that's what it was. <laughs> so she was a support worker by trade, and she, she loved taking pictures, and so she started taking pictures just on the side for fun, and then... Um, you know, she started getting people would say, oh, can you take my pictures? And she would take a little bit of money from them and then kind of had a little side thing going where she was making a little bit of money from photography. And so when she came to find the Business Building Rockstar Summit in 2015, and that was my, that was where I realized, as I just said, that there's no one right way to build a business. And once I had that realization, I decided to go out and find 30 experts on 30 different topics that were willing to be generous with their knowledge and share for free all about how to get started with their tactics or strategies, such as like podcasting. That's just a tactic, right? And um, one of the people I interviewed was John Lee Dumas, which we can talk about. That's how I got into podcasting. But this young lady, she found um, the summit through a Facebook ad. She attended the summit. She signed up for free and she was diligent about soaking up as much knowledge as she could and listening and being inspired from each of the speakers to where after the summit, we wound up working together and um, in a very short period of time, we have worked to take her from a hobbyist photographer who never, ever made more than $30,000 a year in her life to now being an extremely high, extremely well-paid, high-in-demand, internationally published photographer who travels to destinations to do dream weddings. Wow. So, yeah, it's exciting. And so helping her see that because she didn't have she 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 had a dream about that but didn't believe it was possible for her but one little thing you know just that summit made her realize maybe it is true maybe it is possible and with that she took action to see what's the next step what's the next step and and followed the you know followed the support as I guided her and and she took the initiative to learn more to be more to do more and experience more and to grow her dreams and um, has is now living her dreams and her dreams get bigger and bigger and bigger to where she she can't even imagine today what it's going to be like you know in six months so it's so exciting and that inspires me so whether it's somebody who hasn't quite started yet or it's somebody who already has a successful business and helping them make a bigger impact on more people or whether it's somebody who has an amazing you know multi-million dollar company billion dollar company um and is just a little bit disconnected from their mission I just love helping people get back in touch with their dreams and see them to fruition. Mm. Nicole, can anyone be an entrepreneur or are some people more cut out of it than others? I definitely think some people are more cut out for it than others. Um, I, I believe anybody can be an entrepreneur if they're willing to commit and put in the, the dedication and do whatever it takes. Some people are more predisposed, though. There's some of us that, you know, working in a job for me was never fully satisfying or fulfilling. And now that I get to do my thing as I see fit on a day-to-day -day basis and I can pivot and twist and turn. And you mentioned the word risk before. I take risks that I believe are going to get me closer to my dreams. Um, that lights me up. And it, there's a lot of ups and downs in, in entrepreneurship. It can get really scary. And if the fear is something that cripples you, then you definitely do not want to go into entrepreneurship. <laughs> So it's a lot of leap of faith. It's a lot of ups and downs. There's good times. There's bad times. And you just have to go with the flow and and be willing to do, again, whatever it takes, right? Okay. Yes. You mentioned Lee Dumas uh, in one of your conversations. Was Dumas your coach or your mentor? Are you, is he still your mentor? Yeah. So I wouldn't say he's my mentor. Um, your coach? He, <laughs> yeah. So John Lee Dumas was the expert that I interviewed about podcast guesting. So my son which I ran for three years, um, was all about the different marketing tactics and strategies that entrepreneurs or people wanting to become entrepreneurs online could use 
to get their message out to make money. And so I sought out experts in things that I had no idea about and I had no interest in, to be completely honest. There were some things I was interested in, some that I was not interested in, but I knew that podcasting was a hot topic. And this was, again, back in 2015. And so I found out that John Lee Dumas was one of the most um, well-respected, popular podcasters who was teaching about how to be a podcaster. And so um, I asked if he would let me interview him for my summit, which he agreed to. He gave great value on the call and afterwards, you know, asked me about thinking about podcasting. And I said, no, nah, no, nah, you know, I've got other stuff going on. He said, well, you know, you're a really good interviewer and you also, um, you know, podcasting is a lot easier than summits. So you might want to consider it. And this guy, you know, he makes six figures a month. And so I figure, well, he probably knows some things that I don't know. So I'll give this some thought after the summit's over. And so I did. I paid attention to what he had to say. And um, then I bought his program and had a conversation with him about when to start. And I was saying, well, you know, I need this time and this time. He goes, no, 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 no. And so we picked a date. And so March 16th, 2016, March, March 21st. 2016, um, I launched the Business Building Rockstar Show. And so John will always be, I don't know uh, if mentor is the word, but he's definitely a catalyst. He's a great guy. He inspires millions of people. And uh, he was definitely the catalyst to getting me into podcasting for sure. What is the most valuable thing Dumas has told you? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, just to do it. I, I mean, he pushed me to set a date and to just to do it and that it's something that, um, you know, I was good at. And if I enjoyed it, then I should just, just do it. <laughs> well, just simple. <laughs> yeah. The way you just say it, it's like, yeah, it's just simple like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I think those things in life really are simple. I think we make things far too complicated. Okay. What is the most valuable thing you have ever given away? My time, my attention, my patience. <laughs> okay, let's talk about your business, the interviews that you uh, convert. Tell us more about them. Yeah, so this is, um, again, it's a tactic, right? So what I found as a podcaster was that the different guests that were coming to me, um, some were better than others. And it wasn't always based on their uh, level of expertise in their chosen field or their number of podcast interviews they've done or any of the accolades or degrees or anything like that. But I started noticing things that quality guests did differently than regular guests. And so I was just paying attention and I would start talking about it and I would tell my guests, hey, you know, if you do this, you're going to get a better response. And also I, um, I started podcast guesting myself because I thought, well, I definitely, if I'm going to be a podcaster, I want to improve my ability and my craft by seeing what other podcasters are doing, how they're interacting with their guests, what I can learn and, and what I can give. And so I started podcast guesting myself. And amongst all of that, I just kept teaching and kept telling and kept supporting and introducing people. I'm naturally a connector. And again, I love helping people reach their dreams. And so if I know one person that um, could be uh, somebody that could help somebody else, I'm happy to do it. Um, for example, just last night on Facebook, one of my friends had posted a congratulations post about one of his students who had a dream for four years, you know, as, uh, to, to do this entrepreneurial endeavor. And she just did it in a big way. She finally got noticed and she finally got uh, the recognition and things are moving forward. And she was just so excited about it. Her energy was so high and positive and he was a supporter of her and I just adore him. And if he endorses somebody I believe in them and so I reached out to her I said how'd you like to be on my show and so now she's going to be on my podcast and so it's sort of like that just very organically I would support people and connect people because I just think that relationships are so incredibly important and valuable and um and yeah and then finally I was teaching about it I was going to write a book about it but I was just my my mentor said no you need to teach this first and so I had um students that came and I taught them how to be a great podcast guest, how to get the, the bookings and, and all of it. And um, so I called that 
program interviews that convert. And so that beta program went very well. And I started getting more people asking me to teach them. And then I had uh, somebody I was trying to connect. I had a guest I was trying to connect with other hosts because I wanted to support him in getting his message out. And he said, well, can you just do it for me? Because I don't have time to connect with people. And I said, well, no, I don't, I don't do that. There's companies that do, which I usually referred people to. And he said, no, that's okay. I like you. You're a user and, you know, of our, our services and you, um, you're an advocate. So obviously you care, but I don't really have the time or interest to go get myself booked. And I went, whoa, hold the phone, Nicole. Here you are working actively on, t- on bringing on some new coaching clients. And yet here's somebody who wants to pay you to do what you do for free normally, anyhow, and love. That's, got to be a wake up call. And so I said, Okay, hold on a second. Let me think on this overnight, I'll whip up a proposal. And, uh, you know, we can talk about it tomorrow. And so we did. And I did. And he said, Yes. And that's how my business just uh, started, essentially, and has grown. It's all grown word of mouth, um, for the most part, plus podcast interviews like this. Um, But essentially, I built out this system. And so I wrote to some of my friends and I said, Hey, just so you know, I'm going to now start doing this as a service so if you know anybody who might be able to use this service I'd love some you know I'd love you to refer them or connect us or whatever and my inbox got flooded flooded from this small list of a few you know a couple handfuls of friends and they said I know people and hey I want what you're doing tell me more tell me more and so that's how it was built and now we are growing rapidly and um, we've really become far more sophisticated so it's not just about booking um Um, it's that I help business owners reach their target buyers and really make the impact that they really care about making. So it's more than just a transactional experience, but really to help them to to make that impact and, and grow their businesses. And so now the clients that I work with, it's more of a holistic and consulting uh, relationship that includes full service podcast bookings. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well done, yes. Where do we find you to connect with you or someone who's listening on call? Where can they find you, Nicole? Yeah, so what I realized, because I used to have, you know, keep my website up and all that stuff you have to do. And, and I say have to in, in air quotes. Um, um, and and again, my business took off faster than I could keep up with in terms of like the website and some of the smaller things that I had been doing and the free stuff I've been doing. So finally, I shut the website down. <laughs> so you can still go there. We have a lot of work to do on the website um, to bring it up to speed. And it's just not a priority right now. So if you go to interviewsthatconvert.com, you'll see either by the, whenever you're listening to this, either you'll see the website or you'll see a page that says under renovation please pardon the dust essentially and on that page there's a bunch of ways you can connect with me what I really love is the connection I love hearing directly from listeners if I mean I got a message this morning that just brought me to tears about the impact um, that my message had on a listener on the show and it was a different story that was telling because obviously every interview we talk about different things right And so he wrote me um, via Facebook Messenger, and I was just amazing. So if you go to interviewsthatconvert.com, you'll see a number of ways to connect with me, whether you want to email or, uh, you know, send me a Facebook message or what have you. Um, And that's really the best way. So I'd love to hear from any listeners that are inspired or curious or what have you. If you're moved to contact me, please do. Let me know a little bit about you and what inspired you from this podcast to reach out. And on Facebook, can they not find you on Facebook? Yep. If you look up Nicole Holland, pretty much anywhere, whether it's Google or Facebook or Twitter or whatever, um, I have purple hair, so I stand out pretty well, and you should be able to find me there. Well, that's really good stuff. So we will try to find you everywhere. Yeah, and, and <laughs> interviews that convert is the best place because that's, you know, that's the home. So you'll be able to find me from there. 
Okay. So, clan, there will be more from Nicole in a moment. If you are finding Nicole's journey interesting and you are ready to hear more, come and listen to the full version of the interview at onlinesuccessjourney.com. If you're on Online Success Journey already, click on part two of Nicole's journey and you'll get lots of tips to help you move your own business or your own life journey to a right place. And also, don't forget, you can access all other Online Success interview podcast on the site as well that's a wrap clan remember success is a journey patience and decor this is not the end of the journey we hope you've enjoyed listening to part one and want to be sure you know there is a second part to this and every journey podcast at onlinesuccessjourney.com filled with even more success tips uplifting stories and even a bit of fun There are dozens of episodes only available to the members of the Online Success Journey clan. Check out the website and click on Join the Clan for more information. Patience would like to thank you for listening to this podcast, and she has a free audio gift for you at her website. Go to OnlineSuccessJourney.com for instant access to this gift. Of course, You know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and to listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review it at Stitcher and other sites by clicking the stars or completing the ratings form by clicking the thumbs up and leaving a comment on YouTube or liking and sharing the podcast on social media. To review the podcast within iTunes, simply open iTunes to the podcast, click on ratings and reviews, then write a review. On behalf of Patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.